everyone, it's Eliana. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this Christmas card. I'm starting off by die cutting several panels with the Waffle Flower Postage Collage die. And I'm going to be doing some um, ink blending onto the little squares that are supposed to be each, you know, individual stamps. So I'm starting off by adding some post-it tape and it does look like I'm being wasteful, but I promise you I will use every bit of this post-it tape. I'm masking off sections of it so I can um, not muck up the entire thing. Uh, I want it to kind of look like a, a vignette. I'm not sure if that's the right word, but um, I'm also going to be using the um, ink blending to help me line up my stencil a little later on. So once I have it all masked off, I'm going to be taking some inks and I'm going to be using a few of the tailored expression ones. Um, this one is the sprinkles and I'm going to use a bitty blender and I had not used it in a while. So I cleaned it a little bit using some alcohol spray and I'm just trying to make sure that it's dried off. Alcohol tends to dry a little bit faster than water, and so I just use that to clean it. And I'm not sure if maybe there's a little bit of alcohol still left in the center, so I'm just trying to dry it off as quickly as possible. I'm using a rabbit hole bitty blender. I think that's what it's called. I really do like these for stenciling. And I'm just um, starting off on the edge onto the post-it tape, and I'm bringing the brush towards the middle. So I'm not going to bore you with too much of this. Uh, I'm going to do um, several of these. And so I'm just probably just going to show you one at a time. I did um, make this video in several segments uh, over a couple of weeks, just because life, you know, gets, gets a hold of you. And sometimes you don't have time to do it all at once. So I've got all the ink blending down. So what I'm doing is I'm removing the insert of my uh, Misty and I'm adding a sticky mat. This sticky mat, it's, it's not brand new, so it's been used. So it's a little seasoned and that's okay because I don't really want to wrestle with removing the paper. So what I'm doing is I'm putting some three uh, of the purple tape on the back of the, um, cardstock and I'm lining up the stencil with the um, vignettes that I just um, created just the the squares that have the ink blending in it um, and so I'm just trying to line it up as best as I can because you need to do it right the first time because all of the stencils are created to um, be stackable and so if you can line one up then the rest of them will line up so I'm making sure it's careful and I'm pressing that cardstock into the purple tape. And now that I have that, I'm pressing everything into the corner of the Misty and then pressing down the cardstock. So when I remove the stencil, that is exactly where the cardstock needs to be each time. So I'm taking the negative part and I'm going to be creating a place where I could put my die cut every single time. I am adding a little bit of purple tape just to the edges to make sure that I don't accidentally pull it up. So now that I have it lined up, I'm going to double check and make sure that I have everything in place. So every time I switch stencils, um, it's going to be in the exact same spot. So now what I'm go going to do is I'm going to take that leftover post-it tape and I'm going to mask off what I don't want to accidentally blend. So I'm putting it on the back of the stencil. And the reason why I'm doing it on the back of the stencil and not on top, it's because sometimes the paper becomes so saturated when you make multiples, you'll touch it with your fingers and then you'll muck up your project. So by putting it on the back side, you're um, actually getting the excessive ink onto the sticky part. So I'm just gonna show you uh, a little bit of the ink blending. So this next color is Spearmint and I'm using that for the um, green elements on my card. So once that's done, 
I'm going to switch to the, sten the second stencil and I'm going to use more of that post-it tape to um, mask off what I don't want to accidentally color. And once again, it's on the back side. And now I'm going to be using the um, Poblano pepper. I think Poblano is the color from Tailored Expressions. This is a very juicy ink pad. So I actually um, messed up a panel because it was too juicy. And it's a little too strong for me. And so I'm gonna go back with the first stencil and I'm going to kind of blend it a little bit more so it's not too stark. So you see, by putting it into the corner of the Misty, you can just switch stencils easily without having to line everything back up. So now that that panel is done, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that one off and now I can drop my next piece of cardstock into the little grooves. And because you're using that uh, die cut, it has like the little um, perforated edges like on a stamp does and so it's easy to line it back up. So now I've switched over to one of the other stencils and there are four stencils all together. And I switch back and forth lots of times um, just because, you know, I'll do one and then I'll forget to um, ink blend on a particular part, but it's okay because I can just pop it back in to the corner of the Misty and everything is lined up. Now I did tape down my sticky mat to the bottom of the Misty because it does have a little bit of play in it and I don't want to accidentally uh, move it and then have it not line up, which I did before. That's how come I knew to do it. Um, Cause sometimes you just start crafting and you just get in your groove and you're not paying attention to those little details. So by putting a little bit of the um, purple tape on it, then you're ensuring that the sticky mat is not shifting on you. Now I do use the magnet sometimes just to keep the stencil in place. Other times I don't. I did add a little bit of um, purple tape to the edge, that to the little corner there, so you can see it creates a tab, so it makes it a little bit easier to pull it off the sticky mat because it will, uh, it will stick to the sticky mat. Um, it's not that great because it is a seasoned sticky mat. Now, um, if you want, if you have a sticky mat that's no longer sticky, what I usually do is I fill up my kitchen sink, add a little bit of soapy dishwater into it, and then I take a nail brush and I gently wipe all the lint away. And it usually makes it sticky again. And if it's completely lost its sticky, you can use some pixie spray to bring back the stickiness. So I did save the red for almost last, I think, just because red seems to be the one that gets the messiest. And I am using all kinds of different blenders. I have different kinds from different companies. And so I'm just, um, using that. So here I'm kind of showing you where I didn't make sure that it was masked off and I got some red into the corner of that little postage stamp. I am using this little pounce tool. My friend Chris from Stamp Junkies kind of um, sent me the link to this. Um, I'll put it in the description. It works really great for those pigment inks. Um, you can get like a dozen of them on Amazon for I, I'm, I don't even remember, but I'll put the link in there. So I did ink up some of the other sections, but I kind of felt like it didn't really pop enough. It didn't show up enough. So I go back and uh, you'll see later on in the video that I use um, some kind of paste. Uh, what's it called? Well, I'll be sure to write it down. I'm sure I'm going to show it later. So for the snow, I'm just using some Alta New embossing paste. Um, I didn't clean off my palette knife and so it did have a little bit of muck on it. So I am just doing this uh, little section with the tree. And that's why I wanted to add some ink blending for the, to the background because if it was all white, you wouldn't see the white embossing powder for the snow. And once it's dried, 
no, I'm sorry, not once it's dried. Uh, while it was still wet, I added some glitter to it. And this is just some glitter that I got in one of those swag bags from the Stamp Junkies. So now for the gold parts, I am using, this is the stuff that I told you about. Um, it's from Thermoweb, I think. And I'm not sure if this is the consistency it's supposed to be. It's kind of old, but it still worked. So um, as long as I can still use my stuff, I'm happy. So you don't really need a lot to do the stencil. Uh, it just has a little bit. And if you move quickly, you can do most of your panels um, because you're reapplying on reapplying it to each cardstock. You you're not drying it out, so it'll keep it wet on your stencil and um, it won't dry out. So as soon as you're done, you want to wipe it down. Once everything has um, completely dried, I'm going to put everything into my mini misty. I've already put the um, stamps on the lid. As you can see, my outfit has changed. So it is a totally different day. And in Texas, we've had some chilly weather, which is, uh, you got to take advantage of wearing the long sleeves when you can. And so I've used my alignment grid to line everything up. And I wanted to make sure that everything's okay. And you can adjust it and restamp it. And so I was able to pull out these old Studio Calico star veneer. I don't even know if they make them. I was just happy that I got to use something that was old. And so I'm once again using that, that pouncer with the Delicata gold glitz. And I'm adding some color to those little wood pieces of um, veneer. Those wood veneer pieces, I should say. So I'm looking to see what other details I want to add. So I'm going to add some of these pink, fresh, gold um, embellishments to the collar of the deer. And I am using the glue press. And so I did remove the little um, glue plug that was on the end because it had been sitting there for a while. And then you just have to squeeze a little bit harder the first time you go to use it after it's been sitting there and it'll get the, it'll get the glue flowing. For the sentiment, I'm using another waffle flower stamp set. And I'm using my cottontail brush to remove any oils or uh, static from my black panel. I'm going to be using white embossing powder. And so if you don't do this step, then you get kind of a little bit of a stray embossing powder everywhere. Uh, here I'm only going to be doing two sentiments, but I did do several. Uh, I don't show it, but I'll just tell you what I learned. Uh, I felt like I got a better... Uh, image when I stamped it twice with the white embossing with the white ink and I added my embossing powder and then if I um, heated it up from the underside uh, you want to be careful with the white that you don't want to overheat it uh, because it will look very orange peelish if you heat it too much so once you see that it's turned gloss uh, move on don't keep heating it or else you get that little orange peel um, part showing. So once I have done my panels, um, I've die cut them out. Now I don't know why I clipped that out, but now I'm moving on to the inside of my um, card base. So I'm using my uh, Teal Misty and I've used my alignment panel and I have it on the inside of the card and I'm just lining things up and I'm checking to see if I like it if I'm a little bit off which I am I'm going to wipe everything off and I'm going to try it one more time and I'm going to reposition it and shift it down a little bit because I didn't like how it looked and where I put it sorry my head is in the way but I think in this video I pulled out every single color misty that I have um, I have I don't have a rose quartz one I actually just ordered one for myself uh, because I didn't have one here at my house so I am going to stamp the inside of my cards and I'm just going to uh, do them all at once and typically I 
forget to do this part, but I actually remembered it because I had this cute little stamp set from Waffle Flower. And I still have it mounted on my uh, Misty so that I could use it on my next set of cards. So I am going to be using some of my older cardstock or pattern paper. This is the JJ Bolton stripes from uh, Waffle Flower. They do still sell it. It's kind of a classic. Uh, so they do have it as at least last time I checked. So I'm hoping when I post this video, they still have it. But you can probably use any kind of Christmas paper that you have. So I'm using the inside of my Misty and I'm putting the, the pattern paper in the corner and then I'm using that to line it up in my Misty. And if you have anything that's overhanging on the bottom, you can trim it, but it's important to get it on that uh, top side. So I'm going to be using my uh, Misty ruler and I'm using the back of my Misty because you can use the back with your magnet and hold it down. So then that way you know exactly where it needs to be each time. So line it up, figure it out, and then pop it in there. Now for the sentiment, I've already die cut all of them out. And I did wipe, wipe it down with a microfiber um, towel to get the color off. And I'm contemplating on whether I just want to use the scrap paper to add the sentiment. And I decided against it just because it was going to be too much work. So I'm just going to use this black foam um, to, and I had a little piece from a previous project where I'm just going to, um, it, it was like split in half. So I'm just going to use that to line it up. And I'm only going to show you one because I'm going to go back and um, do them all at once later on. Like I said, I'm trying to get this video done before uh, Christmas so you could make them if you want to. So I'm just going to use my tweezers to line it up and now I'm going to add the um, star. I think I've already showed you this part, um, but I'm going to, <laughs> like I said, I made this over several takes and so I'm just going to add the star on the top of the tree and the, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I showed you this already. See, I, I'm probably going crazy here. <laughs> but anyways, I, like I said, I made this card over several weeks. And so I probably was trying to finish what was on my desk and I refilmed this, uh, either that or I'm showing you the same clip. Who knows? Um, this is such a long video. I think I'm becoming a little delirious, <laughs> but anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this card tutorial and be sure to hit like and to subscribe and have a great day. Bye.